Hey guys, Tumbo back again. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Galaxy S22 after using it for three months. My favorite thing about this phone is probably the fingerprint sensor. It is super fast and worked better than the Galaxy S20 and some of the other Android phones such as the Google Pixel 6. I like that the phone is 6.1 inches and it is a compact size. It all depends on personal preference whether you like giant phone or smaller phone but there's definitely pros and cons of each one this one is just super convenient easy to use easy to type in one hand so i really do appreciate that and the next thing i do like is the color choices on this phone this is the purple color but i do enjoy the green color as well it has the latest and greatest snapdragon 8 gen 1 which is the best that android have to offer in 2022 to be honest, between using this and the previous Snapdragon 88 in the S21 and even using the Galaxy S20 on a regular basis, I don't really notice that much of a difference, but it's good to know that you do have like the latest and greatest spec out there. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not going to really make or break your life. And last but not least, my favorite feature on the Galaxy S22 is just the standard uh, great Galaxy cameras. They've always been known for their great cameras in the past. And I'm actually using the S22 camera to record this video. Typically, I would usually record on my S20. But even so, during daylight, can't really go wrong. Video quality looks nice. No complaint on my end. I'm pretty sure if you use professional cameras and all that, the super pro people will, will be able to tell the difference. But to most average consumer, with the naked eye, they're not going to be able to tell too much of a difference, which is more than good enough for me. And some of the things I do not like about this phone is the poor battery life. I'm constantly ha always having to charge the phone or be near a charger whenever I'm free and I see a wire nearby. I just have to constantly plug in the phone because if I don't, I usually wake up about 9 o'clock in the morning and by 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, the battery is pretty much done at this point, at that point. So you pretty much have to charge it all day long. And in addition to that, the charging speed only goes up to about 20 or 25 watts. So it's not even that fast. I do have a bunch of fast charger around the house. But during the time when I'm using this, I did play with the latest OnePlus 10 Pro as well. And just coming from that, where the OnePlus 10 Pro you can charge the phone in about like 15 minutes and that will last you pretty much the whole day. And then here, I feel like I have to plug in the phone for at least 30 minutes or an hour. And it's not really that ideal. I do have like some 15 watt fast charger around the house, some 20 and 25 watt fast chargers. But regardless, it's always a pain to always have to think about battery life. I'm about to go on a vacation, a little bit nervous to actually bring this phone on a vacation. Just due to the fact that I'm always on the go, so I'm not going to be near a uh, charger at all times. I do have a portable battery pack, but it's only about 10,000 milliamp battery. Well, um, I'm curious to see how that's going to last throughout the day. I think it should be fine, but just because of the fact that I know the battery is so bad, it is something I do have to consider in the back of my mind. And on top of that, when the phone was initially released, it was $800. I think it's a little bit too pricey for what it's offering. I know like you get all the premium features, all the, um, the glass back and material design and all that is all great and everything. But the battery life is actually really bad. Even using like the iPhone 13 in the past, I feel like I can make it through 8 or even like 10, 11 p.m. at night without any problem at all. You can pretty much go the whole day without me thinking about battery. But for this phone, it's just a constant struggle for me. I know the phone does kind of... The prices do drop over time after initial release. I've seen it on sale for $700, $600. In some cases, you do trade-in deals. You might even be able to get it for free. Um, so if that's the case, it might be worth it. But I think just comparing battery life-wise, you might be better off going for the S21 Fan Edition. It's a little bit cheaper. The specs is a little bit lower. But you get a battery life, a bigger screen. So it all depends on what you need. And the last thing that I find to be annoying about this phone is the camera edges. It's actually really sharp. If you're using it without a case, I find that my finger does graze to the back of the camera hump pretty often. And it does bother me enough for me to notice it.
Coming back from forth between this and the S20, this one is actually pretty small, even though it's only 0.1 inches difference. So that is something I do notice. I wish it had more storage and lack of a micro SD slot is pretty disappointing. But overall, it's a pretty decent phone. It all depends on what you need. At the end of the day, I probably wouldn't recommend it with the high price tag and the bad battery life. But it's a okay phone if you don't mind having a smaller form factor. Let me know what you think about the Galaxy S22. Please leave a comment below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.